we as a world will strive to achieve by 2030. I was fortunate enough to play a small role in the announcement in India, for the same along with Akshay Kumar, A. R. Rahman, and Mrs. Tina Ambani. It is an ambitious proposal and a tough one to achieve in 14 years, but I do believe that we can achieve this if we all sincerely try together. I'm sure many of you are aware that India had a woman as her head of state way before the United Kingdom, a feature the United States of America has not managed to achieve as of yet. Which is why it is surprising to hear about gender inequality here in India, and yet sadly we do. On a daily basis there are shocking stories in the media about violent crimes committed against women. Yet. I can only imagine how many more crimes there are against women in India that go unreported. This is not an India-specific issue, though. In the UN Secretary General's 2006 report on an in-depth study on all forms of violence against women, it was noted that there is no region of the world, no country, no culture in which women's freedom from violence has been secured. Here is another fact. In India, according to data provided by the National Crime Records Bureau, in the year 2001, the reported crimes against women were 1,43,795. In the year 2005, the reported crimes were 3,27,394, more than a 100% increase in numbers. However, I would like to believe that this increase in numbers is not an increase in crime against women. It is an increase in the number of women who are ready to come forward and report them. The world has largely been led by patriarchal societies and women have, through the years, largely remained quiet in the face of atrocities rather than speak out against them. I know of educated women who remain silent in the face of violence because they are, they are afraid to confront societal norms and have fingers pointed in their own direction. Especially when the majority of our society fails to recognize marital rape as a crime. <laughs> 